Hello, welcome. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are Dan and Mike. We are here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. In this video, we're going to talk about um, one of the things of many, probably, that you're neglecting within your fitness business and why changing this one thing um, can lead to a better, longer-term business. So, what is it, Dan? Is it is it upfront payments? Is it um, you're not sending enough messages? Cold DMs. Enough out, outbound? Send cold DMs Facebook all day ads. long. What um, could it be? What could so, it be? One key thing that you can do is create what we call a lead magnet, which is a marketing term for trying to attract people to basically get on your email list. Um, you can call it a free guide. You can call it a cheat sheet. You can call it a video series. There's so many ways you can you can give this. Essentially, what you do is you're giving away something very, very valuable to your ideal client, your ideal market for free in exchange for their email address for you to then email market to them. What a lot of coaches do is they create a free guide and then you never email people, which is absolutely stupid. Or they use a lead magnet like a calorie calculator, um, which is absolutely fucking pointless because you can just go onto Google for that. Why the fuck would someone give you the email address? And the benefit of a lead magnet is it allows you to identify how many of your followers want this very niche specific thing. So for example, if you have 10,000 followers, you will be able to identify which of those are, for example, let's say you wanted to create a three-step process that all nurses, doctors, and anyone in medicine needs to know when it comes to sticking to their diet and training um, around uh, shift work something like that, right? That's a really shit title. You would obviously make it sound like better than that, but let's say that's who you wanted to identify and work with going forward. And you had 10,000 followers and you put out that lead magnet, you would be able to tell how many of that demographic and that niche want to find out more from you about those things and those tips. And guess what? They would then be your, probably your warmest leads in terms of probably coaching wise going forward. They're more likely to sign up with you because they have a genuine interest in what you have to offer. Yeah, at the moment, most coaches are like, it's shit or bust type thing. It's like, I've got one-to-one -one or nothing. Um, and it's all on Instagram as well. Like, this is the thing it's they do. all on Instagram. Yeah. It, it's kind of like the, the strategy that coaches use is just post a few times, see who wants to sign up for one-to-one, -one, let's see how long that they stay, jobs are good. Um, instead, like start to think of yourself as a business and go, right, okay, well, can I offer them something for free? Think about it, like... If somebody downloads something of mine, that's them putting their hands up going, I'm interested in that specific thing. And you should have multiple of these things. So like the way that I phrased it before is that if you're sat there on Instagram um, waiting for leads to jump into your inbox, um, that's like you're a fisherman in a boat waiting for fish to jump into the boat. Instead, what a fisherman would do is they'd probably put one hook in the water, right? I.e. a lead magnet. And then you go, well, am I going to get more, catch more fish if I put two hooks in the water? Yes, probably. Am I going to catch more fish if I put three and four? So then you go, okay, so should I have three, four lead magnets? Yeah, probably. And then you go, okay, am I going to get more fish if I put better bait on the hook? And you go, yeah, mm. probably, yeah. So in the analogy that I'm using is like, okay, so rather than just waiting for the fish to jump out at you, i.e. the leaves coming through, can I put some, some hooks out where I can identify what bait somebody's taking? So I could put out a hook about fat loss. Again, it would need to be like niche specific and so on and so forth, but let's just cover the broad terms. I could do one about fat loss. I could do one about muscle gain. I could do one about training. I could do one about mindset. I could do one about um, productivity and structuring your week for success. I could do one about setting up your kitchen. Um, I could do a cookbook. Like, you, And then you start to identify what those issues have. Somebody signs up for a muscle gain one, they're probably looking to gain muscle, they might be under-muscled, right? Mm. You can then talk to them about those kinds of topic, topics. Somebody gets a recipe book, they probably don't know what to cook and stuck for recipe ideas and don't really know, you know how to construct a meal. Again, you can start to identify who's interested in you and what they're interested in. Yeah, and using that analogy as well, um, the fisherman wouldn't put his hook in the water and if in 10 minutes didn't get, catch a fish, take it out of the water and then go home, which again is what a lot of coaches do. They talk about a lead magnet once. Oh, no, I really signed up for it, so I didn't really talk about it again. You need to talk about it all the time. And not only that, but you need to be excited about it. Like a lot of coaches do this with a lead magnet or a calorie calculator. They'll just go, oh, um, calorie calculator, link in my bio if you want it. 
fucking that is not exciting in any way shape or form that's why the hell would I want to do that that's because their lead magnets are shit yeah and they don't they don't yeah usually it's because they're shit and they don't care about them. they put no thought into them but the other thing is that you have to sell your lead magnet as hard as you would sell your coaching you have to identify say for example you had a bit of social proof from a client you had a before you had an after you went through the journey of like this is John John felt like this before he was really struggling with this he couldn't get his head around that and this is how he was feeling when since working with me he's now gone from this to that he feels incredible this is how he navigates your situations and this is exactly everything that i um have put into my blueprint that i'm giving you for free it's three ways to maximize your progress in just eight weeks so that you see fat loss quicker than you've ever seen it before using my three-step simple process you need to click the link in my bio now to get it and you'll start seeing fat melt away in eight weeks right which is going to get more people signed up that or the calorie calculator right? That, because you've set it up in a way that sounds good. It sounds appealing. It sounds like it's something people want. And, and that's the thing that, like Mike was saying there about the bait and the hooks, it's like, it's a great analogy because it's like, put a fucking big juicy worm on it, on the hook. Don't just put like a fucking grain of fucking, I don't know, cornflakes or some shit, right? I don't even know where that that's came from. Fish in his life. Yeah, I've had seven fish in my life. <laughs> it would go soggy, wouldn't it? It wouldn't stay on it. But you get my point. But, that's, but you see what I mean, right? Put something out there that they're going to really want. The You're going to catch a bigger fish, right? I'm assuming <laughs> you might catch a bigger fish. The, the right. thing is, right, is that coaches don't sell their lead magnet because they know it's shit. Yeah. So you get better at sales when you understand that the, the, the value of the thing that you're selling outweighs what you're actually pricing it at. That's where you will win at sales. When you know that what you are offering somebody, so for example, somebody gets on a consultation with us. I know that our service is worth more than what we currently charge. I know it because we... We know what everyone else is charging. We know what service they're giving. We know the results that we're getting. So I know it. So I know that they would be stupid to say no. Mm -hmm. So I will sell it because I know it's fucking good. The problem is, is that coaches come up with some shit lead magnet that isn't very good. So of course they don't sell it because they know that it's probably worth fuck all. Create something that you know would be worth something yeah. and give it away for free. Yeah. Don't create your shittest content and give it away for free because that could be the first touch point that they've had with you. Mm. And if they download it and it's wank, they're not going to pay you any money for anything else. Correct. Um, on that as well, so basically like a lot of times I get from coaches like, oh yeah, but what should I put in the lead magnet? Because you know, fat loss is just fat loss. It's calorie deficit, isn't it? I'm like, okay, cool. So if you know your niche well enough and you understand them, you understand their problems, all you're doing is relating these things whereby how you can get someone in a calorie deficit, how you can get them to eat more protein, how you can get them to be more active, right? But you're framing it in a, in a way whereby you understand your niche's problems. So going back to the doctors, nurses kind of, kind of one, right? You would say something along the lines of problem one, that they need to solve is like, they're always on the go. They never get a chance to sit down and eat. They don't get a minute to themselves. Their breaks probably often um, taken over by emergencies. Um, they need something quick and easy on the go. Here's the way that I would get around that if I was a doctor or nurse who feels stressed, um, anxious about their shifts, has no idea what to eat on the go, um, isn't prepared for, for their shift uh, and is worried about losing weight, right? That is then clearly directed to, to doctor nurse. You can even then start using examples of, um, again, I don't know anything about hospitals, but like the break room, you could be talking about certain shifts. If you know the shifts, uh, you know, patterns and things like that, you can talk about, I don't know, specific nurse and doctor terms that they would use in everyday communication. You can be like, oh, if you're in this situation and this happens, they feel understood. They feel like you know them and that you know exactly their pain points and problems. And you then just plug the fat loss advice onto that bit that you, so you clearly understand them. So I'm trying to think of another example, maybe like, so like we've talked about this before, like corporate office worker, right? You talk about three-step guide to staying on track at weekends when your boss is taking you out for, for Friday night, Friday afternoon, uh, booze ups with, with clients. You're going to the races on a Saturday with another client, that kind of thing, right? That's very specific to more corporate style stuff where you get taken out to all these meetings, how to navigate those events. That's going to resonate with them. It's not going to resonate with Susan from Slimming World. She's not going to get the, the point, even though the advice you give both of those people may be the same. Yeah, so don't be scared to give away like your best stuff. I regularly get this um, where it's like, I don't want to make it too good because then they won't need to sign up for coaching. They will. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You could give away all of your best stuff for free and they still won't get the result that they want. Mm -hmm. Don't have such an ego, respectfully, that, that you think that they can't find the same information that you're giving elsewhere. They can mm -hmm. find it in 100,000 different places. They could type it in Google. Like that, they could type it in AI. Like, 
they can literally ask AI and they will tell them step by step of what to do to get into shape. So what you're giving them is respectfully fuck all. Mm -hmm. So don't think don't don't think that what you're giving is oh I don't want to give too much. Put time and effort into a lead magnet. So the lead magnets that we have we don't sell the client and lead tracker. We could sell that client and lead tracker. We did sell the tickets to our event. So, so that is something that is paid. We could s sell them for a higher price than what we currently do, and one of them is free. There, we did sell tickets to Chris Bailey's event and we when we were doing the Bailey seminar. Mm -hmm. We could sell some of the modules from the playbook that we give away for free because we know that they're that they are worthwhile and there is value in there. So I feel good about selling them. Mm -hmm. The problem comes is because you don't want to give away too much value because it's too much time and effort. They're going to get a result. They're not going to need you. You put fuck all effort into actually creating it and then you're uninspired to sell it. So you don't really mention it because you know it's fucking shit. Instead, make it shit hot and then sell it. You'll then get people that get on it. They'll have a good experience with you and they will still need you and it will be you that they go to because they can see that you know your stuff. You can see They can see that you're talking to them. It's well presented. They're getting the gist of it. They're in line with it, but they need the accountability to do it. That's the key. And the thing that the Mike's in there about making it shit hot is that don't just think that that means throw loads of information on a page and make it 60 pages long and cover every single facet of a calorie deficit in your metabolism. It needs to be relevant to them. It needs to be valuable. And 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 we've talked about this previously in other, other videos and stuff, but like value is so misconstrued. People think that value means like, 100 page PDF. No, that's that's less value because actually there's more shit in it and I haven't got time to read it all. If you could say what was in those 100 pages in 10 pages, that's more valuable because it's done in 10 pages and it's quicker for me to read and get through. So when it comes to providing a lead magnet, don't just think, oh, I'll send them this hour long webinar. Well, they're not gonna watch an hour long webinar. They're not, they're just fat loss clients. They don't really wanna, wanna see that. You could do it as a three part, four part series of two, three minute videos where they're gonna get loads more information out of it, right? <laughs> Too many coaches are focused on educating people. They're too focused on giving them all the information they need rather than showing people that they understand them. That's one of the key things that, that when Mike says they're about making it shit hot, what we mean is so that that person reading it goes, wow, this has got personality in it. It's authentic, this person. It's well presented in terms of how it looks, but it is to the point it's usable so that someone can read it and go, that's what I'm going to do off the back of this. Not, oh, I've got more questions now than answers after downloading this. That would be a waste of time. You want to give them very direct, actionable stuff. And I would argue having something that's a three to five step process, a simple five to 10 pages of actionable stuff is going to be far better than sending them uh, a fucking dictionary of 120 page PDF of everything that they could possibly go wrong with their diet. That's not useful. So when we say shit hot, it doesn't mean as big as possible. So you could, the, the key is the hook is the bait as well. So like- The cornflake. Yeah, the cornflake. <laughs> So if we had a lead magnet, right, that was how to get your next five online clients in five simple steps, people would probably get that because of the would hook. You? Would you get it? We'll make it. Of course it would. Because yeah. the, the hook's there, the bait's there. Do I want five, five clients in five steps? Yeah. Cool. So I'll take a little look. So it, it doesn't matter how it's presented. It's done its job because the hook is there. You've got to make the hook good. You've got to make it something that somebody wants. So remember that. It's got to be something that someone wants. So the hook is good. It's in there, right? So then they've, they, they've given you their email address. That's objective done. But then the content doesn't matter how it's presented, but it matters that it's, that it's shit art. So yeah. You get that all it, the time, don't we? Oh, should I do a, a PDF or should I do a video series? Matter. Should I do a cheat sheet? Like, so if, I, if we did the five simple steps to your next five clients, we could do it as a five-part email sequence if we wanted to. We could do it as a five-part video sequence if we wanted to. I could sit and film a loom and give them, give them that as like a, a little webinar type thing. We could write an ebook. We could literally present it as a list, right? As long as the information was relevant, was niche specific, was presented well, that it looked half decent, that it had our voice within it, and it was useful. And they may well go away and get five clients off that, right? And what are they going to do? They'll text me or message me on Instagram and go, that ebook was great or that fucking webinar was great, managed mm -hmm. to get in a few clients, loving it. Cool, that's a win. Like, they will still come to you in future knowing that what they did, what they actioned from your free stuff got them a result, so what do you think they're going to get from their paid stuff? So if you had a lose your first five pounds for free, lose your first five pounds in five simple steps. My first ebook was Beer Belly to Beachbody in four simple steps. 
again, if you give them some tips that starts to see their, them get results, they will know that your paid stuff will be even better than that. If you give them dross that sits in their inbox that they will never look at again, it, it almost tarnishes that relationship because it's shit. Mm. And look, and, and this is this goes back to the, the main point we said there, which is like, we have to sell this lead magnet. We have to talk about it. So if you've done all those things we just talked about, you will want to sell it. You will be more bothered about selling it. Um, and, and, and the other thing as well, that I think is really important is that not many coaches are doing this. A lot of coaches we see come into us or we've seen in other places or come to some other places. No one's teaching this. No one's talking about how important this is. They're just focused on talking to your followers on Instagram and all that sort of stuff. So why is it important? Because we've not covered why the, you would sell it. The reason it is so important is that if Instagram was to shut down tomorrow or you were to get hacked tomorrow, which happens regularly, by the way, what have you got? No followers, no nothing. If we got hacked tomorrow, we've got 6,000 people that we can email to say, hey, we got hacked, here's on your Instagram. And I'm gonna to market to them probably regularly, more regularly if they've got, you know, got their email addresses, right? You have an asset, you have something that is yours to own that no one can take away from you. But not only that, the reason that I like it, the reason that we both love it more than, than, than Instagram is that they are, they are further along the buying process to, to getting something from you. They're, they're further along that process in terms of their what we call a warmer lead, right? You know that this audience are someone uh, full of people who want what you've got to offer. They've told you that by signing up for the email list. Instagram, we don't know that. We don't know how many of the 7,000, 8,000 followers you've got. 10,000 is you. Right? We, don't, we don't know don't how many. Change me. So Seven for example, half. like we don't know how many of our audience are coaches. We don't know how many of them are, are coaches. We can't, couldn't possibly tell you. But I can tell you for a fact that we've got a list of coaches on our email list and we know exactly how many of them are coaches and exactly what lead magnet they downloaded and exactly what emails they're open. So we know exactly what content they're interested in. So guess what? it's easier to target those people with relevant content and relevant offers if we wanted to in the future. Whereas on Instagram, you're just literally going, yeah, today no one signed up, great, okay, so it, it's people, next day. And pe people are more um, inclined to, to post on, on Instagram because it's the perception that they're posting to the 7,000 followers that you're they've not. got. You're not posting the, to the 7,000 followers. How many likes do you get? Like, how many fucking views do you get on your story? Like, and out of those 7,000 followers, you're not gonna coach all of those 7,000 people, but you've got a better opportunity of, uh, of coaching the people that have said that they want your lead magnet. Mm -hmm. So building an email list, mega, mega important. So not only does it provide you the security and safety if you're hacked or if Instagram dies or whatever, but it, and, and again, it's not only a place where they're warmer leads, but it's a place where you're not um, prey to an algorithm. It, it's every single person that has said, I'm interested in what you're doing, will then receive what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't decide that on Instagram. So there might be 500 people on your Instagram that love what you're doing, right? But only two of them, 200 of them, sorry, might be receiving it on a, on a regular basis. Like, that's, that's, a, that's the long and short of it. Whereas if you get 500 people on an email list, all 500 of them are receiving it. It's then your job to create subject lines, hooks, make the emails entertaining enough that you get a better open rate. So, Stop focusing so solely on Instagram and start to have a different avenue to go down with with your emails. No. One thing that we've not covered is like, I don't know if we cover it on a different video, is like paid lead magnet, group coaching. We could, we'll do that a different one. Don't listen to the video. Next one, yeah, you got to make sure you watch the next one. Next no. one. Next week's, yeah. that'll be next week's video. But yeah, look, it's, it's super important. And the, and the biggest thing I'll finish on this is look, it's not sexy. It's not sexy. Sending emails to people, you don't get the dopamine rush. You don't know how many people are liking it sharing it, commenting, they don't do any of that sort of shit, right? It is definitely a delayed gratification kind of process of building a good relationship with people. But I would say out of all the people that I know are successful as an online coach, I think 90% of them have got an email list that they email regularly that I know off the top of my head. And, and that other 10%, I'm pretty much saying to them all the time, fucking do your email list, do your fucking email list. What happens if your followers go overnight? Like, it's, it's no surprise. It's no surprise that those that have that relationship with people and have that understanding able to better target their audience, have have more revenue. It's just no surprise to me. Um, so yeah. On that note, uh, get some of our lead magnets that are below if you don't already have them. So the links are there below. Um, get one. Um, they're shit hot. They're so. shit hot. We've put effort into them. They're great. You'll, it's actionable advice, of course it is. So jump on one. Um, and if you don't already like this video and subscribe it, oh, then, subscribe then do that. Just um, subscribe. It's great for us. It helps us get to that million. 